Welcome back guys for another episode. Today we're going to take a look at another exciting childhood classic. Let's play some NFL Blitz for the Nintendo 64. Welcome to Blitz 2000! Talk about a game that could help settle a debate. All of us younger kids had to wait our turns though, as older brothers and friends weren't putting this down anytime soon. It was fast, loud, funny, and most importantly, it was fun. The quick pace, brutal hits, and over-the-top players absolutely set this series apart from the rest. You could even catch fire if you sacked your opponent twice, or threw to the same receiver three times in a row, making them even harder to stop and will put the pressure on your opponent to make a big play to put you out. Plus an up-tempo, jock jams feeling soundtrack that could turn any frown upside down. Some friends in high school would ask why I don't play current sports games like Madden, and it's just because the games were so boring and slow as crap compared to this. Why would I want to play in a game where NFL players move like this? This speed wouldn't even get you on the JV squad. Realistic my ass. If that's how fast people moved, I'd be untouchable in the league. Now this is more like it. Hairpin turns, bomb throws, and juke straight to the house. And who could forget the rib cracking stiff arms? Nobody, that's who. If you think this was just another sports title, you are dead wrong. It's actually experiences like this that helped set Nintendo apart back in the day, because it's the only console that came ready to play four player action as soon as you pulled it from its box. The high speed and quick ball movement was what kept the game so lively and competitive. There was limited downtime in between plays and quarters were nice and short, meaning you could plow a full game in only around 15 to 20 minutes, which was perfect for a group of friends getting together to square off and the winner would get to keep the controller. King of the court, if you will, but N64 style. Does anybody else remember the solid option when you'd have five or more people around the N64? Whoever gets last has to give up their controller? Of course that led to a whole lot of tempers flaring, crying, hitting, stomping up the stairs, but in hindsight, it really was the fair way to go about it. I mean, what else were you gonna do? Have the winner give up their controller? What sense would that make? Blitz was a great series because it didn't bog you down with any bullshit. It's like, here's the play, now let's go. No false starts, no roughing the passer, and absolutely no pass interference made this game an immediate hit where you could truly let loose and be an absolute savage out on the field. It was so great that I had a group of friends in high school in the late 2000s that would often come over just so we could do some round robin with teams of two. Who cares if their bodies and shadows look like shit these days? The gameplay itself does not. Honestly, we were just being good kids. We weren't going out causing any trouble. Forget the drugs and alcohol, we just need some damn Taco Bell and our Blitz 2000. The controls were just like the game, fast and easy to understand. As the QB, you could throw using your C buttons or just holding a direction and pressing A. Once you got in front of the line of scrimmage, A became your stiff arm. You could jump with B or double tap it to dive or slide, hold Z for your limited turbo, or could double tap it to spin. Also, just like normal football, you could start with a backward pass, and these plays were great for tripping your opponents up. As the QB, you definitely wanted to be jumping as you threw it, despite how impossibly hard this would make it in real life. It just helped a lot make it easier to avoid getting sacked. On defense, this is where you get to channel your inner demon and throw your bodies across the screen. You could shove people over with A or tackle with B. That's all you really have to do. You could also carefully time a B press to jump for an interception, if done correctly. Even though you can often rush the QB quickly, and tackle receivers while the ball's still in the air, it's still so fast that you can make big plays, and to balance things out, instead of needing 10 yards for a first down, you actually need 30. As fun of a game as this was to play with friends, it was also really intense and cool to play a season with NFL Blitz, and this is where the luck factor, aka bullshit meter, would often skyrocket off the charts. Once in a while, the amount of times that you would fumble would get absurd, and the timing of it was just sometimes unbelievable. Being cheap isn't totally out of this game's wheelhouse, of course, as it did originate in the arcade, and the nature of those machines was to milk you for your quarters. Even on the N64 version, it still resorts to plenty of bullshit before giving you the win on higher difficulty settings, or deep into your season. You really have to dig deep and not blow it on the big plays in order to keep everything under control, if the game is going to give you that chance. With its fast yet simplistic style, there were some odd quirks to the game, like the fact that you couldn't take a knee or spike the ball just drove home the point you can either pick up the controller to play, or just keep you and your bitch hands to yourself. When I decided to tackle the season for old time's sake, definitely brought back a lot of fond memories and was surprised to see that even in this game you could simulate for results, which is a pretty funny option. But I guess if you don't want to really play all the games at that point, rather just roll the dice and hope you make the playoffs, I guess it makes sense. It didn't take long though for the computers to be up to some absurd shit, like they'd run right through my line without any hesitation consistently, as I couldn't get near them on my end, 
so I had to resort to banking on some old tricks. But as you've seen this entire time, it doesn't play like a typical football game that you might see, so if you find an exploit, you really need to take advantage of it before the computer shuts down everything. At some point, scrambling out of the pocket just doesn't feel like an option anymore once they're running right through your line. So stretching the field with Hurricane and running back left before jumping to hurl a high long pass to your top right or vice versa was usually a decent option. Unfortunately, the computer will catch on and just start plowing the receiver at the line of scrimmage, so it'll shut that down. Zigzag was also good for a quick opening. As you're about to see, I started to get absolutely jobbed as the game was on the line. I mean, look at how many times my players lose the ball here until the computer touches it just once and their hands stick like glue. What the hell is that? In the end, at least you get to see the stats so you can witness all of your cheap bullshit put into numbers. Even still, it's definitely a beatable game and playing with two players on one side is always great since you can throw blocks for your friend or you can both go to town on defense. Yeah, so overall, I'm not surprised. Of course, NFL Blitz is still fun. It's fast, easy to understand, there's upbeat music, it's funny, and plus, it's multiplayer, so you really can't go wrong, and it's a joy to turn on every single time. It really is an iconic little football series. Um, this is a, a box that I always love to see, brings me some joy, and when I got it, it just happens to be a Blockbuster box from Rental, obviously, so that's pretty cool. Um, but our go-to is always Blitz 2000, lots of great memories with this one. And I'd love to hear your stories. And um, if you can relate, hope you guys like this video. I'll definitely make other little fun sports games um, and those series that just didn't really get as much review attention as they should. But I'll uh, see you guys soon for day four and have a great rest of your day.